Why'd you kill that guy? Why'd you kill the strap hanger? Why'd you kill him? You know, sometimes I just get really tired of seeing the same headlines over and over and over again on infinite repeat and knowing that the same exact policy that we've railed against countless times on this channel happens to be behind it. And in this incident, yet again, involves a New York City subway station, which again, have become incredibly deadly in comparison to previous years. And unfortunately, this will not spark any change at all whatsoever, because Governor Kathy Holko already has her show of force, which is the National Guard checking the bags of randoms in major subway stations, rather than the actual force, which of course would be NYPD officers enforcing fair evasion because I'm gonna guarantee you just like in the previous video there is a high probability this mentally disturbed career criminal did not pay for the fare and one of the ways that we used to get these people out of the subway was to arrest them for jumping the turnstiles because that has downstream positive effects again we've talked about this it's been policy since the 1980s but Bill de Blasio thought better he thought we were just criminalizing poverty and this guy with uncriminalized poverty shove somebody onto the tracks a 54 year old man to his death because that's just what we have to accept as the normal reality of a mass transit system and by the way eric adams and a bunch of people are talking about the non-law enforcement solutions to this like putting up barriers in the subway I actually do support that. I don't understand why this 100 plus year old subway system doesn't have physical barriers there. That's an obvious thing that you should add, but that's not the real issue here in this particular instance because they could have got this guy off the street. Now they're talking about mental illness after he killed someone because now we have to pretend like he's the victim when nobody did anything to intervene earlier, which would have actually prevented this from happening. You wanna take care of the mentally ill? Then maybe take care of the mentally ill. Maybe remand people who can't take care of themselves to custody and maybe hold people who commit crimes in jail when they're repeat offenders awaiting trial. But don't tell me afterwards, after this guy murdered somebody, that he's an innocent angel and a victim of mental illness, like his brother said, a victim of society, because we got to go out and arrest society. And I guess we got to give it a prison cell next to poverty because nobody is responsible for their actions ever. It's all on society. But before we do that, I want to thank everybody who signed up over at naturaljusticewarrior.com slash join. I Give me the money. Give you give me the money. Okay. And remind you that on Saturday, April 27th in Austin, Texas, I will be at the Minds Fest. Link to tickets in the description of this video. When you do an analysis and a cross correlation, you will see it's the same people over and over again. 24 year old Carlton McPherson is someone who's been arrested again and again since he was 16, sometimes for violent crimes. Oh, thank you for filling us in on that, Eric Adams. And by the way, I'm harsh on Eric Adams because the guy's a dunce. He's ridiculous in many different ways. But to be clear, despite what the international expert on bail reform Olay says that this is actually not a New York City law it's a New York State law so the real ire should be directed at New York Governor Kathy Hochul the fact of the matter is the NYPD is down a bunch of officers 7,000 from their peak but around 3,000 since the Black Lives Matter riots we need to replace those officers we're at our lowest point or reaching our lowest point since the 1990s and wouldn't you know it we're seeing more murders in the last four years in the New York City subway system than we saw back in the previous 15 years. So we're going back a very long time, but don't worry about it because many a lefty will tell you if you compare the number of people who are dying, not to the number of people who were dying in previous years, because that would be apples to apples, but to the number of people who ride the subway, that's actually very few people. That's actually a small number in comparison to this big number that we've arbitrarily decided to compare to for the purpose of obfuscating the problem. So pay no attention to the fact that more people have been killed in the New York City subway system in the last four years because it's from 2020 up until right now of this point of 2024 than were killed in the previous 15 years. We're just going to ignore that and remind you that a lot of people ride the subway and not a lot of them die. So big, 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 expand the denominator, expand the denominator, and then we can we cannot have a scary stat. Now, I don't know if you guys know this. I don't know if you guys are aware of this. I just happened to complete crime 
Denial 101 from my online lefty compatriots, and they told me that compared to the 8 billion people on planet Earth, very, very few people die in the New York City subway system. So ignore the apples to apples comparisons, you know, of the last four years versus the previous 15. Just, just pretend that doesn't exist, and think about the fact that there's 8 billion people, soon to be 10 billion people, on planet Earth, and very, very few people will die in this particular subway station on 125th Street in, in, in that day. Honestly, subway deaths are down versus the day that this happened because there was one that day, and now it's down by one, so it's like all completely wiped out. There, there's just, just ignore it. Just pretend that it doesn't exist, and then say mental illness into the abyss, and then the crime, the crime will go away. And if it doesn't go away, go into a New York City subway station, and maybe you'll end up on the track, and it will go away for you personally. But, but, but take some solace in the fact that of all the galaxies and all the potential lives in the infinite multiverse, very, very few people, by comparison to that number, will, will die in the New York City subway system. He handled his latest arrest casually, sliding down a banister as detectives brought him to central booking. Mayor Adams says recidivism like this is one major problem here in the city. Yeah, this really bothers me. And honestly, I understand this guy might be afflicted with some kind of mental condition. It appears to be, based on all the reporting, that this is at least a legitimate argument for this particular individual. But he's sliding down the grail. He's laughing it up. He just killed someone. But in reality, there is some societal failure in this because he's been arrested over and over again for violent instances since he was 16 years old. But the New York criminal justice system, he's now 24 years old, has refused to actually hold them. And we don't have a system in place to hold mentally ill people against their will. And this is the kind of guy that we should have held against his will. And by the way, he'll probably be ruled competent to stand trial. He'll probably serve life in prison. So if you're really compassionate, if you care harder than me about the mentally ill, if you think this guy's just like a mentally ill Aladdin and he needed to push that guy onto the tracks in order to feed his starving family. Also, there's 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 trillions of people in the multiverse that don't don't die in the New York City subway. Then do you think that's a better outcome for him? Do you think this is a better position for this individual to be in, to be in prison based on the crime that he committed? Or should we have probably remanded him to custody and given him some kind of psychiatric treatment before he killed someone. The second issue that we have in this city is a severe mental health illness problem. McPherson also has a history of mental illness, and tonight he's charged with murder in the death of 53-year-old Jason Bowles, accused of shoving Bowles onto the four train tracks on 125th and Lex last night for no apparent reason. Now look, I said it before and I'll say it again. One of the reasons why it's so difficult to remand mentally ill people to custody is because the standard used to be that you cannot take care of yourself, therefore you're going to be remanded to custody. And by the way, this is if nobody in the family or whatever can actually take care of you. However, we've actually changed that standard to a danger to yourself or others and considering this guy has diagnosed mental conditions and a long history of violent offenses the question really needs to be asked why nobody wanted to remand this person to custody before because you actually should have been able to based on his violent history but nobody wanted to make that move nobody wanted to restrict his freedom his freedom to shove somebody onto the subway track for no apparent reason now they interview his neighbor his neighbor is very broken up he also has an alliterated name that adds nothing to the story but i'm gonna point it out to you so let's cut to him i just feel so heartbroken because you know life is so short and you never know when things can happen at any moment sammy sanchez says he only knew voles in passing but that he seemed kind listen i'm not somebody who's gonna bite the hand that feeds me local news reporting really does aid this channel but why are you filming this man climbing up the stairs? Like, he's obviously a little bit up there in age, has a little bit of a difficulty doing so. Why, why is this B-roll inserted in the, into this? It's like in there for two seconds. Why are you showing this to me? I, I, I know this is like off the point, but maybe we need to remand the cameraman or the editor into custody because he's a dangerous individual based on his decision to insert that in here. His record shows he failed to show up for court twice after being arrested for attacking someone on the street last year, but was released after the victim didn't cooperate with the investigation. So this guy was arrested multiple times recently for not showing up to court based on an assault rap. And again, I will point out that the reason, even under New York law, that you're supposed to be able to hold somebody pre-trial is because of bail jumping, the fact that they don't show up for their court date, 
But as you can see, based on our fancy chart that breaks down the different various bail reforms, y you can't hold somebody even if they refuse to show up to court, because why would we ever have a law that makes any sense? The NYPD says subway crime is down compared with last month, but up compared with this time last year. Now, first of all, I just want to point out to everybody out there in the audience that what they just added in there is a Mayor Eric Adams dumb talking point that has nothing to do with anything. He's like, subway crime is down this month compared to last month. Who the hell cares? Because compared to this time last year, this same period, it's up. And typically, crime will track from the same month versus the same month. That's how we normally look at data. But Eric Adams wants you to be rest assured that crime down, not up. It's going to be down, down, lower, lower, because, I mean, why else would we be sending the National Guard into the subway unless crime was actually down and, and not up? The mayor says district attorneys and lawmakers need to consider the repeat offenders and mental health issues that combined become a real threat to public safety. If we don't get in front of it, we are going to be dealing with a severe public safety crisis that other cities are experiencing. Look, the fact of the matter is, while jail was an imperfect system for mentally ill people, and it did cause undue stresses for them, we were adding services for mentally ill people across different jails in the United States of America and prisons. And the fact of the matter is, getting rid of the jail option for these people without something to replace it, you know how these people are always like, well, when we say defund, we mean redirect it to other resources that will compensate and do a better job they don't actually do that they redirect it to stupid programs that, that don't help at all midnight basketball would not have saved this situation and this is what we actually end up with you judge a tree by its fruits not by its intentions this is why a lot of smart lefties who back these policies who thought that they sounded good realize that they're a disaster and are advocating for them to change it doesn't make any sense to continuously back a failed system that repeatedly churns out repeat offenders and victimizes as innocent people, especially if your long-term goal is criminal justice reform. You have to actually address the problems with your policy if you want to keep any of it, but in reality, we're at a point in time where hopefully people are going to decide that they want to get rid of all of it. Tonight, more mental health evaluation is expected to be ordered for Carlton McPherson when he appears here in court. But as he faces a murder charge, there is no chance he'll be released anytime soon. Now, they're going to do the mental health evaluations. And like I said, they're probably going to determine that this guy has some conditions, but he is going to be deemed competent to stand trial and stand trial. He likely will. The fact of the matter is, if they wanted to address the mental health issue, for this person, you could have done so at the point of arrest for assault. Again, a danger to yourself or others is the current standard. That shouldn't mean you have to wait until these people murder somebody before you decide to talk about mental health, but it appears to be that is the new deflection for the left wing when it comes to these violent offenders, to these random attacks, to these repeat offenders, and to these people that we definitely need to get off the streets. But like I said, there is no problem with criminals. There is no problem with mentally ill people. The problem is all society, evil white racism and poverty. And until we arrest all of those and put them in a jail cell, we're never ever going to have any solutions to anything because a lot of people on the left, unfortunately, refuse to see it. But most people aren't like this. Most people are changing. Most people in the real world that aren't professional activists know what needs to be done and they're wanting the changes. And by the way, Little by little, they roll back bail reform. Step by step, they make moves towards the right direction, and we've seen some positive indications in the homicide rate. We're not lower than 2019, but you know what? Every time they make reforms, even according to the left-wing study that advocates for bail reform, we actually see a reduction in recidivism. Because guess what? Holding people, incapacitating them, it works. It, it, it prevents crime. You can't commit crimes in society when, when you're removed from society. It's, it's pretty simple. But, you know, many of you out there in the audience will say, in the multiple galaxies, and if you add up every person who's ever been alive on all the Earths, on all the multiverse, then you will, will find out very, very few people compared to that group who died in the New York City subway last week. In fact, if you counted all the dinosaurs that were killed by a meteor or a volcano or by being too big to get on Noah's Ark, v very few dinosaurs were, were shoved on the subway track by this specific individual the other day in New York City. So it's pr pretty, pretty safe by comparison when you look at the numbers like that. 
anyway, that's all I really have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then show them by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on all my social media, support me via the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about another subway killing, another subway shoving, another instance of crime in the subway. Till next time.